Oh, crunchy. Squishy. Squishy is bad. We don't like squishy. I think a crack had gotten into it. Some water had gotten in here. And now this wa this board here is all rotten. But we got to get this really, really nice and dry first. So I got the heater in here. Get this super, super dry. About a week ago, Alice noticed there was a crack in the bottom of this slide right here. So I went and took a look at it. And sure enough, behind this crack was rotted wood. And I was like, uh-oh, this is really bad. So let me just pull off a couple of these screws. So I pulled this trim piece off. And behind this trim piece was this ABS plastic ski. This is basically goes underneath the RV right here. And the, the RV slide slides on the floor on this little ski. And it goes underneath and it goes all the way to the front of the slide. What happened was this ski got a crack in it. And with that crack, water came down the side of the RV, got in there behind the ski, and because it's ABS plastic, it held all that water on the inside and eventually rotted the end of this wood. So parts of this wood are very soft. Some of it's really soft. I could really stick my finger in there really good. So luckily, it doesn't go back further than about an inch, but I have got to um, do a repair here now where I'm going to replace the slide ski. So I was able to go online and I found a replacement. This is a dual form uh, slide ski. It's got the front slide part on each end so I can cut it whether I need it for right or left. And that's gonna go back in here, go underneath. This one's a little wider. This is six inches wide and a little over an inch, probably like an inch and a half tall here and here to fit up here against the side. Okay, so right now, to, just to show you how I jacked this up, I got a stack of the wood that I usually use to put under the, uh, the levelers. I, ha I don't need it right here because we're on concrete. I actually waited to do this project until we were at this site. It has a full concrete pad, which gives me a really nice base to put my wood on. And it gives me the ability so I have all this wood to stack up. And I have it leaning up here against this tire. Then I have a bottle jack. And then I'll show you underneath here. I have two of these two by 12 um, pieces, uh, squares under here to give a really nice strong support under the RV. And I didn't have to jack it up very much. I jacked it up about, you can see I jacked up about two inches there. And that, that's really solid in there. I'll show you what that looks like on the inside in a minute. But it's important that you have some ability to be able to jack up your slide. First, you've got to be able to get in there to pull off the old slide ski and then to be able to put the new slide ski we're going to put this new slide ski in from the inside and push it in we have to make sure that the slide is jacked up off the floor to be able to slide that in there this is what it looks like jacking it up from underneath okay i'm here at the top of the slide just to show that i have groom up here after i've cranked it up i haven't pinched the top of the slide up against the RV. You want to make sure that you don't raise it too much. Okay, now I'm going to stick a little piece of two by four in down here where it's not going to interfere with my ski going in and out. But it gives me a little bit of safety sticking my fingers in there, um, which I don't want to do. But at least if the slide comes down or the jack comes down, I don't get my fingers pinched. I want to control just the living room slide. So that's the passenger side slide. And in our grand design, there's control knobs in here. So our kitchen control slide is right here. And then our living room slide control is right there. So what I did is I shut off this knob. It is three and a half rotations about uh, clockwise to turn off. And so now when I activate my slide controls, the only slide that goes in and out is the one that's still open, which is my uh, living room slide so that I don't have to push both slides in and out while I'm working on it. Okay, so you can see I've got the slide jacked up. Normally, this right here would be sitting on the slide. You can actually see where coming in and out is actually carved a little groove into this uh, plastic right here that the slide slides on. But this piece right here is the forward part of that slide skin. I'll just pull it off. The other part is broken off underneath. But you can see they just cut a couple of uh, pieces of double stick tape before I can put the new slide ski in, because this slide ski that comes from Duoform 
has a, an end on both ends so you can use it on right or left sides. I've got the trim off this end. So well, I want my this ski to go in in this orientation. So this front edge will be here. This will go along the front side of the slide and that it'll go up and meet under here. I don't need that far back. Okay. okay, so I don't need that end. So now I'm gonna take this uh, ski, slide in here. Now because I've got it jacked up, I can stick that under the slide. And I gotta kinda stick it over like that and that's gonna go in there like that. Taper that at the factory so that it fits right in and meets up with that slide ski so that it has this little ramp so when it comes in and out of the RV, it slides on this and then doesn't scratch the floor when it comes across the floor. Okay, so Alice is holding that one side in there, trying to keeping me from pushing it back too far. And what I'm gonna do is, making sure I've got it right, I think I've got it trimmed just the length that I want. I'm gonna clean off the side of the sidewall, get all this old Eternabon type sealant tape off, clean off all the silicone. I used a putty knife and a razor blade tool to get it really nice and clean. It'll be in there just like that. So it'll be nice and tight inside that edge. I'll be able to put the screw there and hold it in place. Using some mineral spirits and a rag here to get the surface really clean. Finishing it off again with my razor blade tool so I have a really good surface for adhesion. I had Alice hold the front of the ski to the slide inside while I made some reference marks to make it a lot easier when putting the ski back in later. So you can see I got my line up here. The ski goes all the way over to this edge and it goes all the way underneath the slide here. You can see it goes all the way underneath. When the water comes down here, it'll be sealed from going underneath there, keep it from going underneath and should really help protect this wet. So then when the water comes drips down over this edge right here, it won't be able to drip and get all the way back to this wood. It'll kind of drip off this plastic right here. I used some alcohol to clean the sidewall again in preparation for putting a four inch wide piece of Eternabond from the side of the slide wrapping around underneath for that one extra layer of water protection to keep that wood dry. I carefully applied the Eternabond and then finished it off with my Eternabond roller to make sure it had a really good contact with the surface. Now I'm going to prepare the ski for sticking it onto the slide. The The old ski had two uh, two strips of basically just double stick tape which obviously wasn't doing too good. Now uh, the Duoform kit comes with uh, a little package of tape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick one strip of double sided tape on the inside so it gets good adhesion there. Then I'm going to use butyl tape, a strip of butyl tape along the edge on the inside here all the way up to uh, seal it well. I cleaned the surface of the ski really well with alcohol before applying the strip of double sided tape to the inside and a strip of three quarter inch butyl tape to the outside. I made sure I left enough of the non-adhesive backing sticking out and use that as pull tags for pulling that off later. Okay, so now I've got these little pull tabs so I can peel it off underneath. So one of the things I have to do is I've got to trim a little piece of this plastic to get around this piece of the slide. I want it to come up as high as I can up here and I've got to trim it back uh, from here on. So from here out to here I've got to trim this. I marked the area that I wanted to cut out with my silver sharpie then I followed up cutting it out with some plastic shears and then cleaned it up a little bit with my Dremel tool. Okay, I'm doing a test fitting on the dry fit right here. Get it all fit in there. And it's all good in there. And you can see where I'm gonna fit here like this because this piece right here is actually cut back a little bit from um, the sidewall. There's gonna be a little gap right in there, which is fine. So I'm probably gonna put some more double stick tape up here. I decided to add one more strip of butyl tape along the inside edge of the ski where it'll meet the side of the slide. It'll just give one more layer of protection from water entering the ski. Okay, so now I have my uh, dual form ski with all the butyl tape and double-sided tape on it. I got it trimmed 
so it fits around i've test fitted it now i'm ready to put it in place unfortunately while i was positioning the ski i had my gopro on time lapse mode but you can see here i'm positioning the ski into place and then peeling off the adhesive back into the butyl tape while i positioned it i put it in final position and then stick the inside edge up against the side of the rv making sure the butyl tape had really good contact i went back in the rv moved my safety block down a little bit and then push the blue tape under the slide and then pulled it out from underneath. Grab that blue piece and peel that back. I'm sticking my fingers in here. I got this block underneath to make sure that my fingers don't get trapped because I'm gonna pull this butyl tape off. Just like I pulled off the other one. Pull this off. Basically, I'm gonna stick that tab on the inside there so I can grab it from the other side but there's the white strip that I just pushed through I'm pull it off a little bit at a time a little bit at a time and peel it see that pull that all the way all the way back to make sure the butyl tape had really good contact between the ski and the side of the slide, I came back with my dead blow hammer and just really tapped it into place to make sure that it was making really good contact. With the ski stuck in place, I went back and trimmed off the front of the ski, the part that goes under the carpet to make sure that it did not stick up. Okay, so now I got that in place. I'm actually gonna put a couple of layers of butyl tape in here and the reason I got to use two layers is because there's this lip right here. And if I don't put two layers, it actually won't make contact. I want to make it so that these holes, these screw holes are nice and, nice and sealed. So if water does get back there, it won't be able to make its way through the screw hole. So we're going to put a couple layers of butyl tape on that. I cleaned the inside surface of the bracket really well to scrape off any of the old uh, adhesive that was on there. Cleaned it really well with alcohol, then applied my first layer of butyl tape. And then I peeled off the uh, non-adhesive backing and just applied a second uh, layer of butyl tape on top of it. And that's going to go in this orientation like that right there. I want to use the same holes to put these screws in. So I have them marked. I marked them earlier. And um, I've just used this little tool right here to find those old holes instead of using these rusted screws that were in there these are a number 10 screws and they're about an inch and a half I'm gonna replace them with stainless steel screws and instead of an inch and a half these are two inches long and hopefully I'll be able to get back and get into some good wood if this isn't strong enough I also bought some three inch ones that should be able to get back in there and get in that wood but I'm reusing those holes because I wanted this bracket to line up exactly the way it was before. I started off with the two inch pan head stainless steel screws and wasn't getting as much bite as I wanted. So I switched them to the three inch uh, flat head. It was just that I couldn't get three inch pan head that weren't available. A lot of people don't like the uh, silver uh, stainless steel and would paint them. Um, I'm fine with this stainless steel look. Here I'm bringing the slide in eight to 10 inches. Anytime you move the slide, you gotta make sure that you don't have your jack jacking up the slide, just confirm, because you do move it in and out quite a bit. I just use uh, my drill driver and put in three inch screws here to the two inside screws. Now I'm gonna come along with this uh, Provex Proflex RV sealant and seal this top edge and around this corner, especially because it's, even though the butyl tape is actually sticking out there really good, I wanna seal this edge really good um, it looks like whoever did a repair before me used silicone, so it's really important that I clean that off really good. And I'm going to give it one more clean just before I put down the, um, I'm using a little alcohol, before I put down the Proflex RV. I've already cleaned this really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim my uh, Proflex RV silicone. I'm going to make this small. As small of a cut as it will allow me to, which is that's about as small as it will allow me to. I'm using a good quality cock gun here. When I put down a, uh, I'm putting down a petroleum based sealant like this, I like to have a little, um, 
swatch of mineral spirits here. I got some mineral spirits and I like to keep that on a cloth. So it keeps my finger, when I go to wipe, keeps my finger smooth along the edge. Put that, that down here like this. I'm gonna put it in a, a nice bead, not too big, not too small. Enough to seal it. I'm gonna stop there, hit my clicker, make sure I'm not pushing out any more ProFlex there. Now I got my finger wet. What I'm gonna do is smooth it just a couple inches at a time. Wipe. Get my finger smooth again. I put down too much, but that's okay. Can't do too much at a time. Otherwise, it, it, it'll smush all over the place. So I put down. Makes it nice and clean. Put down a little too much, but it's okay. It's coming out really good. It's important that you don't do too much at a time, otherwise it smears all up and down the side of the, put that all the way into that corner right there. I finished sealing the top edge of the bracket with uh, ProFlex RV all the way to the inside and carefully wiping it. I moved the slide in about 8 or 10 inches again and then applied some more ProFlex RV clear sealant to the top edge of the bracket. I cleaned this vertical edge above the bracket where I had removed the screws and pried it open to put in the ski and then just reapplied some ProFlex RV sealant. I replaced the two screws that I removed with number 10 pan head 2 inch stainless steel screws. I also sealed the bottom of the bracket where it meets the ski with ProFlex RV clear sealant. I decided to seal up the screw heads also for two reasons. One, it's pr extra protection from water intrusion. And two, because I had used flathead screws, they were raised up a little bit and I didn't want them to injure the seals as the slide came in and out. Okay, let's take a quick look at uh, the final product here. See how she looks underneath. Looks good. There's a little bit of bowing here, but I think that that'll eventually stick. I decided to put one more layer of the double stick tape to the most inside edge of the skis to hold it up against the bottom of the slide. It probably wasn't necessary, but I didn't like the way it was bowing down and I had the extra tape. I used my dead blow mallet and my roller to make sure that the uh, double stick tape and the butyl tape were really firmly attached to the bottom side of the slide. Okay, I'm finally finished with this project. Got my new ski on here, got it all really well sealed. I definitely went overboard with the Eternabon and the extra butyl tape and the extra sealing and the extra double side stick tape. I really wanna make sure I did not have a recurrence of the leak in this corner. Luckily, I caught it before the wood got really badly damaged. But um, if you have had a leak like this and have had to do a project like this, please leave a comment below and share your story. I'd really be interested to see, you know, what you did to repair this problem, things that I did that you didn't do, or things that you did that I didn't do. I really want to know because I've got three more corners I'm going to have to do here in the future. I will leave a link in the description of all the supplies and parts and things that I use, including a link to these dual form skis. I'm also eventually going to do a blog post, uh, which will have all the stuff I wasn't able to inc include in the video, and that will be on our website. I will leave a link to that eventually in the description. Now, if you really like this video and you found some value to it, you wanna see more, please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking this link below. That would really help us out. Now, I will also leave a link right over here for other DIY videos that I do on our RV. And remember, downsizing does make sense.